entropy gain over temperature. It's another way of saying noise figure for antennas, active antennas, antennas which have a LNA integrated. And the topic is uh, how do you measure an active antenna, and even more specifically a phased array antenna, when you can't connect the effective noise figure of a phased array antenna when you cannot connect to the input of the antenna. So very briefly, active antennas and noise. Active antennas have um, uh, an aspect where the noise is coming from each of the little individual elements. Uh, pointing the other each of these little individual amplifiers before the phase shifters creates the noise. The noise is incoherent and adds incoherently. The wave front coming in is coherent. Um, in general, but for G over T measurements, you'll see in a minute, they may not be coherent. One of the problems is as you beam steer the antenna, uh, there's some question about, depending on this design, how the coupling impedance will affect the noise from one element to another. So realistically, they have to be measured in a beam steered, steered condition. So what is G over T? G over T is the, from, uh, really came from the original space telescopes, uh, radio telescope work. It's the gain of the antenna, and here the gain means um, the gain over an isotropic radiator. Another way of saying that is the directivity of an antenna, um, kind of the beam angle of the antenna, divided by the equivalent input temperature of the antenna and that includes the T0, or the environmental area of the antenna, plus the noise that's going into the uh, antenna, or the LNA coming from the LNA itself. So space-based antennas are facing the coldness of space. In space, no one can hear you scream. It's very cold. Um, depending upon the beam angle, you either pick up more atmosphere or less atmosphere, and the less atmosphere you pick up, the colder it gets. So when you're trying to test an amplifier in a chamber, the noise, unlike a regular signal coming in, the noise can come from anywhere because the whole chamber is at T0. A traditional, what I call mechanical phased ray antenna, a high gain antenna, has structural gain in the antenna itself. And so it will point in one direction, so to speak. But a phased array antenna doesn't have gain until the combining occurs. And so because of that, noise from anywhere in the chamber can get into the antenna. And it makes the traditional method of measuring this not work well. So, did I miss that? Here we show phased array. Each one of these antenna elements has almost no gain, and therefore uh, noise from anywhere in the chamber can get in. The traditional way of making a G over T measurement is you use a Y factor noise source that goes between hot and cold, but you have to overcome the range loss, which might be tens of, d of dBs, maybe 50, 60, 70 dB. So you have to amplify the noise source and filter the noise source because you can't amplify a broadband noise source by 70 dB or you'll take megawatts to get out of here. So you have to filter it and then amplify it and you have to compensate for all of this. And still, the noise by the time it gets here may not be significantly greater than the T0. So it causes lots of trouble. So how can we get around that? Uh, a little product specific, I apologize for this. This is, uh, slide was from an internal presentation. We can use a network analyzer to drive the gain measurement. And I'll remind you that in a noise figure measurement, the noise figure Y factor is the hot versus the cold temperature. But the hot temperature is really only used to measure the gain of the noise figure measurement. So here we can measure the gain directly. And then if we can measure the noise accurately out here and we know the gain, we can come up with the G over T directly.
And in this example, I take a specific amplifier, I'll call it a 20 dB gain amplifier with a 9 dB noise figure and a 24 dB of mechanical gain in the antenna. And if you do the computation, it gives us a minus 8.92 dB G over T. And here's the computation right here. I won't go through everything here, but just uh, the very simple way of measuring is it's the gain of the antenna, the directivity of the antenna, minus the noise figure of the amplifier. I mean, this 24.62 is a magic number. It's the hotness of T0 expressed in dB. So here's our active antenna, and we go through the gain computation. I'll skip that. This, to make the measurement in a chamber, so here I'm using a compact chamber, so we're gonna transmit from the VNA, you go off of a parabolic reflector, and here I've got a standard gain horn that's gonna be measuring the range loss. And in order to measure G over T, you must first measure the range loss. So the measurement of range loss is really from the face of the TX horn to the face, sorry, from the input of the transmitter horn. This is the calibration point of the network analyzer to the face of the RX horn. We call that the range loss. Now the horn itself has gain, and so we have to compensate the range loss for the standard gain. So the typical thing we do is we measure the S21 of the whole thing, we subtract off the standard gain horn, and that gives us the uh, range loss in dBs. So in this case, I have a 25 dB is the S21, but the standard gain horn has 24 dB, so we have to subtract it off, and that gives me my 50 dB range loss. So now that we know how to measure the range loss, Let's measure that artificial amplifier that I created. So what we can do is we can measure the noise figure of the whole system. So it's easy, and there's been lots of papers written on calibrating network analyzers for noise figure measurements. If I measure the noise figure from here to here, I can see how the range loss applies. I can go into the noise figure of the system, and I can compute the, see what the overall noise figure of the system would be. And so from this math, we can go through this set of equations and find that for this example device, I'd have a 34 dB system noise figure. Let's take that to the next slide and say, okay, what's the G over T? And if we go through a little bit of math, we can show you that the G over T of an antenna is one over the system noise figure, one over the range loss squared, and T zero. Remember that S21 is always in terms of square root of power, but when we do antenna, everything's in terms of power, so we have to square the S21 term. So, if I take back to my example device, and I take my 34 dB of noise figure of the system, and my T0, and my range loss, yes, indeed, the math works, and we get the proper measurement of G over T. So this is just kind of reversing that previous calculation. The point of all of this is, this is the formula we will use to measure the G over T of an antenna. Uh, you can even put it into an equation editor so you can show it directly on the trace and remind you that you have to use the mag squared of S21 if the system noise figure is in dBs. So now here's the measurement. This is the same compact range and I'm looking at this phased array antenna. Here's a close up. This is an eight by eight element phased array antenna. Here's the analyzer connected up to the transmitter and back through the chamber wall to the receiver. One difficulty with phased array antennas is their behavior changes depending if they're calibrated or not calibrated. What does calibrated mean? Each one of those elements facing out can have a different gain and a different phase. For a receive antenna, you typically set the gain to maximum, but you want to phase align them. So here's a measurement on that antenna of the relative phase across the face of the antenna. So this is really the eight elements by eight elements, and this is before calibration. You can see it goes from red of about 45 degree to 
blue of about minus 15 degrees. So you see a big phase variation. After calibration, we can get that down to a couple of degrees. Why does that matter? Well, the, the gain isn't changed so much by that, but the directivity or the uh, direction of it is. So uh, uh, Professor Rubiz kindly gave me this measurement of a different antenna, shows in this case the bore site apparent gain can change by about a dB and a half. The actual gain only changes by 0.6 dB when you calibrate it, but your pointing angle can be off as well, so you have to be quite careful with that. So using that 8x8 sample array, and this is in the paper, it shows you all the different stack-ups of all the losses and gains, and this particular antenna, we would expect a G over T of about minus 10.82 dB. So here I connect up the antenna, and I make the measurements, and this is at one frequency. I measure the gain of the standard gain horn that I used for this was 6 dB, 16 dB. The noise figure of the system is 41 dB. The measured range loss was minus 40, 39 and a little, and finally, that gives us a, a G over T measurement of minus 10. Here's a plot of that G over T measurement. So here you can see the noise figure of the system across frequency. This is the S21 of the system across frequency. Down here, these are not measurements, but data from the standard gain horn from the manufacturer and the range loss from the previous measurement using the uh, gain horn instead of the antenna, and they all go into this equation that computes the G over T directly. And you can see a variation of G over T across the antenna with the highest or best G over T here. So you don't have to measure those little bits and pieces. If you have a, instead of measuring noise figure of the system, we can directly measure the noise power out of the device under test. So this formula shows you that something we call the d device under test relative noise power, I for incident into the device, times the T0 temperature is the noise power density. And so we can basically take and find what the noise power density is from the relative noise power coming out of the amplifier plus the T0 amount. And this formula shows that if we know the S21 of the system and the noise power density, we can get the G over T as well. But this requires not a noise figure measurement, but a noise power measurement. Fortunately, most of the network analyzers that make noise figure measurements also make noise power measurements. So here, we can make a really simple calculation, which is the antenna gain minus the relative noise power coming out of the amplifier plus T0, and that gives us the same number. And here I'm showing three plots. This is showing the S21 of the system, my, uh, which is a 41 dB gain. This is showing the noise power of the system, which is 27 dB above KTB, and this shows the G over T, essentially the same number in the previous example. So in summary, we can make, if you have a network analyzer that can make noise power measurements, you can make uh, G over T measurements of an active antenna. The standard gain horn is the key to calibrating the system and uncertainty in the standard gain horn will be uncertainty in the G over T measurement. This cold source method does not require a noise source of any kind, either for calibration or for measurement. And we can configure the, v, the VNA screen to directly measure G over T. And it turns out after some offline discussions with Professor Rabiz, um, we both come to the conclusion that G over T is the only effective measurement of the quality of an electronic antenna receiving a signal. Thank you. We do have a few minutes for questions. If anybody's got uh, questions for Joel. Is everybody awake this afternoon? Too much lunch? Two hours off. <laughs> Thank you.
somebody's got to have a question. Yes. 